an underrated creature with a complex social structure. The Hyrax is important for a <laughs> reason. I apologize, my audience is laughing. The Hyrax is mentioned in the Bible. This is important because it's one of the earliest known mentions of the Hyrax. And even in the earliest known mentions, it is regarded as very important. So, four things on the earth are small, yet extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength, yet they store up their food in the summer. Hyraxes are creatures of little power, yet they make their home in the crags. Locusts have no king, yet they advance together in their ranks. A lizard can be caught with the hand, yet it is found in king's palaces. So, why is this little creature important? How is it relevant? These seemingly small and defenseless animals have survived using a unique and incredibly specific social structure that has allowed them to live in the wild for a very long time. Without this social code, there would be no way for them to have evolved and operate as they do now, as they would have died before that could have happened. While it may seem odd, I believe we have a lot to learn from them. When you look at them, and when you look at the face of evolution, it just doesn't make sense that they would just keep going. So I think that there are some things that we can learn from them and how they've survived over the years. The Hyrax's wisdom. So something, probably the most trademark thing about the Hyrax is the fact that they make their home in the crags. So a crag is a divot in rocks. Hyraxes are found in Africa, so they'll usually be found up on plateaus with crevices in the rocks. And they live in these communities of about 50 males, or no, 50 Hyraxes one of them a male and the rest females and children. So we can look at their structure and the way that they've lived together and we can kind of learn a bit about how to live in community, which is really what they're known for aside from living in the crags. There's not a ton that's like publicly known about them, but when you dig a little deeper, you can learn a lot about just the kind of strange way that they live. The Hyrax is cool. Here's why. <laughs> So, there are five main species of hyrax. The yellow spotted hyrax, the western, eastern, and southern tree hyraxes, and the bush hyrax. Woo! We're not going to go into the specifics of all of them, <clears throat> but we are going to divide them up into two main groups. So, the tree hyrax lives in pairs in forests, maybe the jungle, and they live in these pairs and they forage together. The one that we're going to be talking about today, the one that is referred to in the Bible, the one that is more well known for its complex social structure that I believe we have a bit more to learn from, like as an overall community, would be the rock hyrax, or the dassy, or the singing rock rabbit. So they have different names. They're typically called some form of badger, but it's a hyrax. So the rock hyrax, as I said before, lives in these communities of about 50, and it is one male and the rest female and children. So you wonder how are they surviving all together? All these little animals, how are they not getting picked off by eagles? So they actually have this very, it's almost a classy system. It's almost like a very modern system. They have, they establish a laboratory or a latrine system where they don't just go to the bathroom everywhere. They actually have like one restroom that they were like, this is our restroom and that is where they go. They also assign certain hyrax to patrol duty to go around the rest of the hyrax while the hyrax that are sunbathing, which is like most of the hyrax, 90% of the time sunbathing on these rocks, they actually sunbathe so much of the time because they can't patrol or they can't keep their body temperature up. So most of the time these hyrax will just be out there sort of like reptiles and then they're being patrolled the entire time. I think that we can kind of look at this and we can take away the fact that everything in this social structure is for protection and to maintain peace within the group. Another way that they do this and maintain this system is through communication. So they have a very unique form of communication where there are 20 different calls and they actually use syntax, which means they sing to one another and the order that these calls are in changes the meaning of them, sort of like our language which I think is so interesting because I don't know I haven't heard of that anywhere else in language in um, the animal kingdom aside from sort of birds but wouldn't have thought that they sing 
They also use dorsal patches or scent glands, which is where they have these patches on their back that release this scent, and they can recognize if they have mutual friends. And they practice structural balance based off of this, which means they'll recognize their mutual friends and they'll sort of form cliques within these communities, sort of like people do. So they sort of speak the way that we do, and they carry on similar social patterns. I think that while we do hold a lot in common with them already, which is very odd for an animal that we know we're just not publicly educated on a lot, it's just a very strange kind of unique thing that we don't know about, um, I think that we could take away just the communication that they use, they are constantly, like while they do carry clicks and while they do withhold this social structure that we also withhold, they're always talking to one another. They're always communicating. And that is how they maintain safety within this group. So they'll constantly be talking to one another and if something does come to threaten them, the Hyrax on patrol will alert the rest of them. It's all defensive together so that they can go and hide in the cracks. So it's all just based around protection. In conclusion, I would say that the Hyrax is wise because it sets an example for us and how to live as a community and how to communicate well within that community. Its unique and complex means of communication is an example for us. While it may seem primitive and something we have moved past, I do believe that we can learn more from the Hyrax even now. And okay, so these aren't exactly part of the presentation, but this video is an example of a Hyrax yelling this is just one of the sounds that they do, and I think it's, I think it's pretty funny. Oh, they scream like little people. <laughs> and then this one gives a little information as to just the taxonomy of the Hyrax. So the Hyrax is actually closest related to the elephant for the shape of its feet and its incisors which I thought was really interesting. It's closer than any other animal, even manatees, which is very odd. And then this is the Hyrax Sun Shield, which is actually how the Hyrax on patrol duty see animals coming for them. So a lot of the time their main predator in Africa is eagles. And what eagles do a lot of the time is they will hide between the sun and their prey. So when their prey looks for the eagle, they're blinded by the sun. So Hyrax actually have this little sun shield on their eyes, sort of like built-in sunglasses, where when they look up at the sky, if an eagle is hiding behind the sun, they can see it, and they can alert one another and do their little sing-song, hide in the crags type of thing. But these are also my sources, mainly taken from Britannica and African Wildlife Foundation. Thank you for your time, and I hope that you enjoyed learning about the Hyrax.